Hey, it's Joseph here. Today we are in a model house that is made by Parkside Builders. So thanks to them, this video was possible. It is clear that the 3D virtual tour has become a great way to showcase your property and for the others to see and understand the space much easier. Although this is a residential space, you can actually apply a lot of things that I'm about to talk about in a retail or commercial setup as well. So for example, for a hair salon or a small gym space, if you were to scan that and make it available in public, then the potential customers of those services can actually tour around your business and have better understanding of what you are trying to offer to them. So if you're interested in that sort of content, just please let me know in the comments down below. I'll be able to perhaps cover them as well. And today's device of interest is Insta360 ONE X2. I have showcased ONE X as well as ONE R on my channel. So if you haven't already, I'll leave the links in the description so that you guys could check that out. But this is the first time I'm showcasing this specific camera with this workflow. And I have received this camera from Insta360 for video purposes like this, but I'm not really affiliated with Metaport at all. So everything that I'm about to cover today is based on my experience and what I have learned by using these devices and the services. And I use this camera for multiple reasons such as site survey and real estate photography, 360 tours and even for webcam and action cam vlogging type of aspect too. So yeah, it is a quite versatile tool and hence why I'm trying to showcase this more and more on my channel. So if you want to know anything specific about this camera or a workflow, then just leave the comments down below. I'll be happy to have a look and perhaps even plan a content for it. The sun is fading quite quickly, so let's just go ahead and do everything that I need to do here today. But here's a little tripod setup that I have made for 360 camera scanning purposes, and it is this. And I actually have showcased this setup on one of my other video, which I'll also link down in the description. But basically, I just extend this however I would like to, and the legs spread out like so. And then because this is much heavier at the bottom, it is that much more stable and it is able to extend quite far. So let's just undo these so that I can actually make them stand taller. And it can actually go much taller than I am, but I'll probably leave it about my eye level. So somewhere like there is perfect. So I'll leave it like so. And then I'll be connecting this camera with my phone. And the phone that I daily drive and using for this specific purpose is Samsung Galaxy S10e. And I understand all Android devices are now supported for most part, as well as all the Apple phones and tablets. So iPhones, iPads, and all Android phones are covered. But some of the features that I'm about to cover are in beta. So things might change in the future a little bit but I expect them to continue working. So first I just need to turn on the camera. So here you can kind of see what is going on on the screen here. It is actually capturing 360 angles so you can kind of see me in there as well and you can touch it to navigate through. So that's pretty much the standard control of this camera and it is really nice the fact that it has a nice big screen for me to just at least have a glimpse of what is going on. Okay, so on my phone, it is trying to connect to the camera. I'll just connect it. And as you can see, the camera itself is showing stuff on the display as well as my phone. So I am able to look around and also start recording if I want to. And this is all through Insta360's app. So I need to go to Metaport Capture app, press this plus button, and then it'll ask you a brief description of what this place is. I'm just gonna type in test. So now I can just press this button 
And as I press that, my Insta360 camera is going to do a 3D scan. However, I'm literally standing right in front of it, so this wouldn't really work for this sort of scan purposes. So basically, when you do a wrong scan, what you do is click on that and then just delete the scan so that everything appears as nothing. And then I'm just gonna go away from that camera over there, remove myself from the scene. Again, this is 360 view, so you gotta be careful. And then press that button to scan it, and then come back and then move in different positions so that I can complete the scan in the area. And as it makes the scan, it makes the clicking noise and then my phone will basically receive that picture and then process it and then put it in the area. You can kind of see the room already and kind of zoom in and place it. But currently I'm positioned right there. And then I'll just kind of go around the room and then fill some of the void area, which is kind of shown as a black over the tables and such. It is not shown there because it did not have a way to capture those areas. So I'll go closer it and then scan that as well. Granted, this is not really a big space, therefore three points would probably suffice for this specific area. But the rule of thumb is that you wanna do something like five to 10 feet away between the scans in a direct line of sight. So that will do for now. And then I can basically take this scan, go somewhere where I have sort of a Wi-Fi, and then upload this model, let Metaport figure out what to do with it. And then they'll just send me the processed scan, then I'll be able to share that to the world. However, today's video is slightly different because I wanna introduce a different method or workflow to this. With the beta version in Android at least, there are a few different ways to upload your photos. So with the beta version, I can click on here. I have either the choice of using the Insta360 ONE X2 versus this device's camera, meaning the Android phone to capture the area versus importing 360 images. But I'll just do uh, three scans with my phone to see what that result is like. But I also think being able to upload 360 views or images is quite useful because one, the scan speed could be boosted because after you do a scan, you kind of have to wait for your phone to align the shot and then configure it and here the process got a lot faster than what it used to be so i don't have to wait that long and also if it ever gets misaligned i used to have to reshoot and hope that it realigns correctly but now i can actually realign it myself as opposed to relying on the app and just hoping that the scan just lands correctly less complex scene like this is not as big of a problem but in a very large repeated areas it sometimes have problems so that takes care of that speed in question but what i'm actually on about is the fact that you can just go shoot 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 with just a regular 360 photo capturing with the insta360 app on your phone connected to the camera and then later upload those photos instead doing the scan and making sure everything is aligned yes there is a bit of risk in that but if you need the rapid speed to capture a area then that might come in handy and that means that you can use other cameras not just limited to a specific model or brand of camera and point number two is a fact that if you ever miss the spot for whatever reason then you can ask somebody else or for you to come in very quickly and do a 360 photo of that area and upload it to your existing scan and another scenario that i could think of is a fact that let's say uh, art has changed or uh, overall paint has changed or maybe somebody just made a renovation of the area then you can actually recapture that area 
and then realign with some of the existing captures that you have done, you don't have to go out and do the scan again. You can actually ask somebody else to do the scan for you and just send you the photos and then just process it with the device that you already done the scan before. So that kind of avoids doing a redo of the entire space. And number three, if you want, you can actually make the area somewhat digitally. So because I do 3D modeling and rendering, if you want to do maybe a bit of mixture of reality versus the virtual reality or 3D rendered scene, you can actually do that. And I'm actually planning on a video about that too. So if you're interested in that aspect, then please leave any questions or things that you wanna know about in that specific workflow. I'll be able to create a content around it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a bit other type of scanning methods. One thing I did notice in the 360 photo method is the fact that I need to set everything to the ISO priority for much better accuracy, as well as there's an option for HDR photos, so you can utilize that if you want to. Well, that is all to be tested. It is actually aligning for quite a long time than usual. I imagine it is because it's doing a lot of stitching and aligning. Well, there it is. Let me do another one. So just a brief thought about the Android scanning. My phone is draining quite quickly. I mean, yes, I'm screen recording, so it's probably not really helping, but it is heating up and draining quite quickly. So now that I finished all the scanning, I'm just gonna pack up and actually go home to upload all of these scans and further evaluate how they compare to each other. I'll just kind of give you a conclusion of all of that. Now I have all the scans processed, so let's just have a look at this one. This is a direct scan off of the Matterport scan app, and you'll notice that the overall image quality is actually much darker than what I would like them to be. I see a lot of contrast on the image and a bit grainy in the areas that are really dark. So those are what I have noticed. However, if I go to the dollhouse, you can see that things are quite well contained in terms of the mesh. And it is more apparent if you go to floor plan, the overall scan is quite regular, meaning it is quite accurate. However, if we go to the next one, this one is a scan with the Android phone. You can see that if we go to the same spot, the overall image quality is actually much better. It's not as grainy on the dark spots. And then the image is quite well maintained in terms of the overall contrast ratio and all. So it is much more preferable. However, you may notice some occasions where things are not lining up correctly. So you see how there's my finger there and then some things that are not quite lining up 
and this is probably due to the fact that I didn't pivot off of the phone rather I pivoted off of my feet therefore the phone has kind of trouble lining things up and it is more apparent on the floor plan you'll see that things are not lining up properly there's a little bit of bulge within the floor plan which indicates that things are not exactly accurate so image quality much better things are actually legible and sharp however the overall accuracy of the plan suffers in terms of the android scan again this might just be because i didn't pivot off of the phone therefore you might have a better result if you were to pivot off of the phone however i just wanted to show you what my result was like and now let's have a look at the jpeg upload basically you scan everything off of the insta360 app and then upload the 360 photos to Matterport Capture app and this is what the result is like. The image is much more preferable so it's not as contrasty and then there are some noises however it's not as bad as the Matterport Capture direct scan. And in terms of the accuracy of the mesh, you'll see that on the floor plan, it is quite accurate too. So actually just because it took much less time in order to scan this or to capture the photo, my preference would be to actually use this method instead of doing the direct alignment and scanning off of the Matterport Capture, just so that it is much quicker and I can actually do some post-processing if I really wanted to so I can actually take out some of the noises on the Photoshop if I really wanted to and up the contrast ratio or reduce and brighten up the image or so on the 360 photo uploads whereas those are quite limited in terms of the Matterport scan so yeah I think this one is a winner for me what do you guys think so yeah, that is just comparing all three results on my end. Obviously your results might be slightly different to what I have experienced here. So I'll be interested in hearing your thoughts or your experience based on what you have done if you have tested any of these three methods. And if you're wondering about 360 cameras and space scanning methods along with the Metaports, then please use the links in the description that I'll leave for those videos that I have covered in the past. And I'll leave the affiliated links in the description for you guys to go ahead and purchase some of the devices that I have used on this video. And if this content was helpful and if you have liked this content, please like and consider subscribing to my channel to continue watching these type of videos as well as some of the contents that I have mentioned during the video. And thank you so much for watching. As always, I'll see you next time. Bye.